movement disorders is an area of neurology that deals not so much with strength or sensation, uh, but more with complex movements. So walking, uh, the ability to do a complex task like play the piano or write, those kind of things. So movement disorders as a group, it's a very prevalent group of diseases. There's estimated to be half a million people in this country with dystonia. There's estimated to be a million people in this country with Parkinson's disease, and more if you consider all the other Parkinsonian diseases. And then there's considered to be probably about 10 million patients with essential tremor. The care of movement disorders is very individual. There's really no two patients that are alike. Um, each patient has to be evaluated in a, on an ongoing fashion to decide what is the appropriate treatment regimen, whether that involves injections, medications, or a surgical uh, procedure um, that, that gives you the best effect for that individual patient. Parkinson's disease occurs because there's a dropout of neurons in an area of the brain called the substantia nigra, which results in a loss of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter. So there are medications that either increase the amount of dopamine in the brain or medications that stimulate dopamine receptors, that's the first line treatment because by increasing dopamine receptor stimulation, we can see an improvement in symptoms. Um, down the line, however, those medications may become ineffective or effective for very short periods of time during the day so that the patient has a very choppy day, an unpredictable day. And then at that point, we think about other modalities. There are surgical treatments. Um, the most common one uh, being used now is deep brain stimulation, in which an electrode is placed into a part of the brain uh, that is the target for dopamine and sort of bypasses those pathways uh, and allows us to have some of the same effects that the medication has, but on a more stable basis. The percentage of patients that might benefit from deep brain stimulation would probably be 15%. We're currently the only center in the area that does MRI-directed implantation of deep brain stimulator electrodes. That allows the patient to be asleep during the entire procedure. Typically, when deep brain stimulators are placed, the patient is awake. Um, because the brain has no pain receptors, you're able to do this. But it does require the patient to be on a table with their head locked into a frame for a number of hours. And certainly doing the entire procedure under um, anesthesia allows the patient to be more comfortable for that. It also allows us to do direct anatomic evaluation of the placement of the electrode. And we found that that's very effective in terms of getting the electrode into the correct part of the brain. So we're using that quite a bit. Essential tremor is, again, it's a form of degenerative disease. There's a loss of neurons. Where exactly that is is not as well characterized as in diseases like Parkinson's disease. There are certainly some cases that have to do with loss of neurons in an area of the brain called the cerebellum, uh, which is an area that helps people have smooth ramp movements, not choppy, uh, incoordinated movements. And a loss of some of those neurons seems to result in essential tremor. But there are other parts of the brain that are suspected to be involved as well. It's not quite as well delineated. There's a few medications for essential tremor that are effective in a subset of patients. But it can be a very difficult uh, disease to treat. It can be very debilitating. So when the medications don't work again, uh, there is standard types of treatments. One of them, again, is deep brain stimulation, but in a different part of the brain. And then there are newer therapies, such as focused ultrasound, that are being investigated now as um, a somewhat less invasive way to try to uh, improve the patient's tremors. The focused ultrasound procedure uses ultrasonic beams that intersect uh, at that target, at the thalamus. And we're able to target the thalamus and without in, uh, creating an incision, without creating a burr hole, without putting an electrode into the brain. What happens with dystonia is as the patient moves, there's motor overflow. The muscles become increasingly and increasingly 
tense and tighten to the point that the limb really doesn't function very well. And so one of the treatments we use for dystonia is obviously medications that result in some relaxation of the muscle. And that can help patients in some ways, and in, in sort of a minor way, reducing the tension. Um, we can do more directed therapy by using uh, botulinum toxin injections. Botulinum toxin forces the muscle to relax for about three months at a time. And by doing very directed injections, often guided with uh, EMG, which allows us to actually record the muscle activity from the tip of the needle, we're able to, in a way, sculpt the muscle in to put the, the limb into the best position of function. There are forms of dystonia that are, again, treated with deep brain stimulation uh, to uh, a part of the brain uh, called the globus pallidus interna. And there's certainly a number of genetic forms of dystonia, but also acquired uh, forms of dystonia that, that benefit a lot from deep brain stimulation as well.